Hello and welcome to the Energy Transition Summit. Thanks for joining us from wherever you are in the world. I'm Nick Gowing, your chair for these two days of summit, today, Tuesday, and also on Thursday. It's part of Climate Action's Transition Month. We aim to bring together key stakeholders driving sustainable and net zero transition from policy and regulation to innovation, technology and investment to build and maintain momentum towards COP26 and well beyond. Well, as you saw there, today's summit forms part of the wider transition story with that particular focus on energy. The energy transition is driving the imperative for scalable and cost-effective solutions. Increasingly, ambitious em emission targets, uh, reduction targets, will take center stage at COP25, to COP26, I should say, this year, as we confront the true scale of the global energy challenges we face. That was made enormously clear in the new energy map uh, from the International Energy Agency literally just a week ago. Here it is. Their tough warnings and ambitions are our reference point, our spine for these transition discussions on energy. The greatest challenge humankind has ever faced was how Fatih Barol, the IEA executive director, put it. And let me just quote to you a couple of things on energy from the IEA. The world has viable pathways ahead to building a global energy sector with net zero emissions in 2050. But it is narrow. It is narrow, they say, and requires an unprecedented transformation of how energy is produced, transported and used globally. And a second point they make very strongly. In the near term, a net zero pathway requires the immediate and massive deployment of all available clean and efficient energy technologies, combined with major global push to accelerate innovation. So there is a key need here for stakeholders to come together, to drive momentum towards clean energy. And that's what we are here to address. What the IEA says last week is about greater international cooperation. We have more than 1,500 attendees today. So welcome to you all. We uh, uh, appreciate um, you being here, we hope you will appreciate the discussions and will contribute. How to do that, I'll tell you in a moment. Preparing the energy system for the global green economy. Over today and Thursday, we have four sessions. We bring together leaders from industry, from finance, from policy and government. Session one, in a couple of minutes, will address the decade ahead to power the green economy. That's where you are at the moment. And we'll be joined live in about 10 minutes by the uh, Chief Technology Officer of Bosch Climate Solutions. Uh, he'll join me live. And then in session two this afternoon, uh, European time, we'll explore what innovations will be needed. Then on Thursday, session three, we'll cover green investment opportunities for clean energy in emerging markets. Session four 
in the afternoon will dive into the role of oil and gas in a decade of whole system decarbonisation. Your hosts today are Climate Action, working together for 14 years at the intersection of policy, innovation and finance. Their mission remains to accelerate the transition towards a global green economy and achieve the aims of the Paris Agreement six years ago. Do connect with them throughout the summit at climate underscore action underscore. So this is now the next stage of the Climate Action Roadmap to COP26, designed as a platform to help organisations raise their ambition before Glasgow this year. It's our last chance to keep the world on track for no more than a 1.5 degree increase in temperature. Of achieving that, though, is going to be far from assured. The IEA talks about a need for a more credible policy outcome from government. And citizens also have to be mobilised, says the IEA, about the scale of radical change that is needed. Let me thank our headline partner today, Oliver Wyman. Oliver Wyman is a global leader in management consulting with specialised expertise that cuts through complex climate systems to create new opportunities and new pathways. We'll be hearing from them in just a moment. Thanks to all our partners for their support, to Bosch, to Energix, to NL and Carbon Trust and Kiwi Power and MHI Group and Nodes Power and all our institutional and media partners for their support and endorsement as well. Let me underscore to you that this is being recorded. All sessions will be available in on demand shortly afterwards. Don't forget to give us your feedback. We'd love to hear from you one way or the other, hopefully very positively. Visit our virtual expo and our partners. You can meet them. Do network, connect and engage. Even though we're not meeting in person, we hope you can at least communicate with each other. Via the platform, you can also ask questions of the guests and the panels that uh, will be joining me. You can go to the live discussion, uh, press the button there and type your questions into the box. Let us know which organisation you're from, where you are and, uh, if possible, who you'd like the question asked to. And remember, these are the social media contacts that you have at climate underscore action underscore or use the hashtag, hashtag climate action live. Now, let's move on to the first session for the next couple of hours, a decade to power the green economy, scaling clean energy capacity to power an electrified green economy. First up, we'll hear from our headline partner, Oliver Wyman, then a conversation with Torsten Kalweit, who is a CTO of Bosch Climate Solutions, to learn about how business ambition can drive change even faster than they plan for. That'll be followed by a fantastic panel with four leading figures from the international energy community discussing striking the balance and scaling renewable energy production to meet the global demand. We'll round off the first session with Lord Adair Turner. He's chair of the Energy Transition Commission. What can be done and how fast is feasible? He puts the realistic assessment on that. And to end the discussion, um, we'll have a session with a call for action from Bosch's managing director. We'll then take a break until 1400 BST, that's UK time, for session two, where we focus on a decade of innovation. First, though, I'm delighted to introduce our opening keynote speaker, Francois Austin from Oliver Wyman. Hello, everyone, and good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are around the globe. My name is Francois Austin. I am a partner of Oliver Wyman and lead the energy and natural resources practice and co-lead the climate and sustainability platform. Whether you're from the corporate world, government, or on the investing and insuring side of the energy space, we're all confronted with supporting the same challenge, helping to drive the transition to a more sustainable economy. We each play a unique role as energy leaders with energy permeating every facet of industry, society, and our global economy. The next decade is key if we want to meet our Paris Agreement targets. Recent research by Oliver Wyman and CDP Europe reveals that the current trajectory of European corporates for 2100 is in line with the level of emissions reduction associated with global heating of 2.7 degrees, well above the Paris target 
and falling far short of the European Union's policy ambitions, leading to non-linear, abrupt environmental changes with catastrophic impact. And reducing our global emissions isn't just something that's important to business. Our consumer stakeholders want it to happen just the same. In a recent survey by the Oliver Wyman Forum, we found that more than 80% of respondents across seven major industrial countries say they regard it as important or very important for corporations to commit to reducing their carbon emissions and becoming net zero. On the topic of people, we're confronted with resounding population growth and the subsequent need to provide energy to so many more people. According to the IEA's net zero by 2050 analysis released just last week, global energy demand by 2050 will be 8% smaller than today with 90% of the electricity generated coming from renewable sources. We need to push forward our efforts now because if we don't, we'll be left stranded. This then begs the question, how can we achieve this? Investors and financiers are looking to direct funds to green opportunities, but there is a dearth of opportunity and a lack of tangible commitment by companies, even today. This needs to change urgently. Our research with CDP Europe shows that banks are committed to taking action and can lend as much as $4.8 trillion to create real change if they can find enough green investment opportunities, and many of those can be found in the energy sector. This is not or should not be about simply directing capital towards green companies and taking it away from brown ones, leaving the critical greening companies stranded between. The world risks a collective failure to recognize the great strength and impact that many greening companies can and must bring to accelerate the energy transition, leveraging their global reach, large-scale project delivery, and technological development capabilities. The transition will also require us to really look at hard to abate sectors that are the key sectors as such as heavy transportation, like airlines, rail, shipping, haulage, logistics, and also in heavy industrial sectors like steel, chemicals, metals, and mining. Oliver Wyman is proud to be collaborating with the World Economic Forum on the financing the transition to a net zero future initiative which explores ways to mobilize private capital at scale to finance the net zero transition. We've been looking at five hard to abate sectors, starting from the big transitions that need to take place, what they mean in terms of changes to the value chain, and how the financial sector can play a role in raising the finance needed to make that happen. We simply can't let hard to abate sectors become the next pariah. Let's take natural gas, for example. It's a hydrocarbon, yes, but one which is abundant and has a much lower carbon footprint than oil or coal and could play a really important role in reducing carbon emissions in hard to abate sectors and in big emitting countries like India and China on their journey to net zero. It was even until recently lauded as North America's transition fuel the abundant, cheaper, cleaner way to pivot from coal to a future of low carbon fuel and renewables. But in recent years, it's been replaced increasingly by cheaper renewable fuels. Oliver Wyman estimates that a reduction in natural gas share of the generation mix could cause the destruction of as much as 4.7 trillion of asset value by 2050. Investment in technologies like carbon capture and recycling may be the answer to allow the sector to continue to play a role in, decar in the decarbonisation pathway and be a complement to renewable fuels, but make it greener and more effective along the way. And in speaking of technology, according to the IEA, most of the global reductions in carbon dioxide emissions between now and 2030 in our road to net zero come from technologies that are already on the market today. But in 2050, the IEA estimates that almost half the reductions are estimated to come from technologies that are only at the demonstration or prototype phase today. This means we need to really push for major innovation progress over the next 10 years. Regardless of how you look at it, partnerships and collaboration are vital. This energy transition is particularly challenging and requires a thoughtful, collaborative approach from policymakers, financiers, 
technologists, company executives, and end consumers to achieve it. It needs to be an effective, fast-paced transition that doesn't risk the planet by failing to act quickly or damage economies by acting in a blunt fashion or lead to an unjust outcome by stranding billions of people in energy poverty. We need less finger pointing at polluters and more collaboration to collectively solve the big energy challenges and accelerate the transformation of these systems to the benefit of all. While we would prefer a smooth transition, it is equally important that this not be an abrupt abandoning of fossil fuels in favor of renewables, which would not be a smooth transition to say the least, but be rather a deliberate and systemic pivoting to greener energy systems and operations. We need to be able to work with all those involved with powering our world. 2021 is without doubt a year of renewed optimism for the world, which presents leaders with two major climate platforms, President Biden's Earth Day Climate Summit in the US and COP26 in the UK. Let's grasp the collective nettle and redouble our efforts to tackling climate change in a joined up, thoughtful and collaborative manner so that we can deliver the cleaner, greener and more prosperous future that we need and deserve. As we gear up for the sessions today and on Thursday, I want to extend a sincere thank you to the Climate Action Team for pulling together this phenomenal event and convening leaders who have the power to create real change. Oliver Wyman is proud to be a headline sponsor and to take part in these crucial conversations around the energy transition. I look forward to the sessions ahead that will feature the latest thinking and perspectives from experts across industries who can help spark your ambition to continue to drive change in this space. With these details in mind, I want to leave you with one last thought. Let's not let these conversations stay here at this event. Instead, I challenge you to discuss these topics with your colleagues and actively implement change in the areas where you operate. In doing so, you can work to close the gap between climate intent and climate action. Francois Austin there of Oliver Wyman. Thanks, uh, Francois. Underscoring that there's plenty of cash if there are enough investment opportunities, but also underscoring that hard to abate does not mean that these kind of uh, sectors need to be pariahs. Fascinating that. Now, he mentioned there about how there can be ambitions inside companies and how these ambitions can be met.